Hi everyone, I'm James Hart and welcome to this Orbex Trader education session where we're going to be taking a look at a really important form of analysis which is of course multiple time frame analysis or multi time frame analysis for short. Sure. And one of the really interesting aspects of this form of analysis is that it's quite unique because it's actually strategy neutral. So what I mean here is that no matter how you're trading, whether you are a pure price action trader or whether you use indicators, whether you trade with the trend or you look to capture counter trend reversals, multi time frame analysis can be applied to your trading and indeed should be a key part of your selective process. So considering the instrument or market you're trading on a broader scale, looking at time frames can have vast benefits for your trading. So for those of you who aren't familiar, then multi time frame analysis simply refers to the process of viewing the market on different time frames. So, for example, looking at the weekly, daily and H1 charts of the same pair to get an idea of what the market is doing across these various horizons. So that is what multi time frame analysis is. But what is its purpose? What are the aims of this form of analysis? So simply put, the aims can be categorized as identifying the dominant trend with which you should be looking to a trade to allow for bigger profits. And then also looking to identify key locations, which can either be areas that you will trade, areas that you will target if you're in a trade, or simply areas to watch out for and be aware of as you trade. So over the course of this session, then we're going to look at how you can use multi time frame analysis just with raw price action. But then we'll also look at how you can use multi time frame analysis with indicators. OK. So basically, then, as I said, using multi time frame analysis to get an idea of the dominant trend in the market is among the simplest and most effective ways of employing this form of analysis, because trends historically, typically rather, seem to offer the best opportunity for profit. So regardless of what is driving the trend, central bank policy divergence, interest rate differentials, or simply speculative action, it doesn't matter where we can identify a strong trend. We should be looking to trade with the trend as the momentum is on side there. And this gives us the best opportunity to capture profits. So in terms of multi time frame analysis, we want to identify trends on the higher time frame and then look to use the lower time frames to pick off entry points and time our entry to the market. And generally, once you get good at this and really refine your entry points, you can start to identify some really powerful trading opportunities. So, for example, if our trading time frame, so these are the time frames that we're actually using to place trades. If these are the H1 charts or the H4 charts, then we should be looking at the daily and weekly charts to get a sense of the bigger moves that are taking place to see if we can align with them. So if we know that price is heading down clearly on the weekly chart, then we are far more likely to catch a move playing to the short side, e.g. selling rather than looking to buy. So this is the bottom line of multi time frame analysis. We want to use it to align with major trends as much as possible and then avoid getting run over by playing counter trend. So let's look through some examples then and I'll walk you through what I mean. And again, if you have any questions during the session, please just stop as we go along. Uh, sorry, please write them in the chat box and I'll try and stop as we go along. And then there'll also be some time for questions and answers at the end. OK, so here we go. In this example, you can see that we have a really nice bullish trend developing on the H4 time frames. OK, so price starts out at this point here, moving sideways in a range. You can see we've got these two lows here with a clear support area and then this band of resistance. So to begin with, price is simply moving in a nice sideways range. But then at this point here, you can see that we start to build that classic bull trend structure of putting in higher highs, higher lows, higher highs and higher lows. OK, so the market is moving in that staircase fashion which really typifies a bullish trend. 
So looking at this chart then, and looking at just this chart, I'm sure that if we had to take a trade, if we had to forecast where price was likely to go, 90% of you would probably be happy to look to buy. OK, so we put in a really clear bullish structure. And if you were looking to trade this chart, you'd be looking for long opportunities. So we could look to trade breakouts above highs. We could look to trade retracements into previous highs. We could look to buy off the bullish trend line. However you look to trade, if you were just looking at this one chart, I'm sure that you'd be comfortable simply looking to take long opportunities. Now, the problem with this, and this really is a mistake that many new traders make, is that what happens when you look at one chart is you simply get bogged down in looking at one time frame and you develop tunnel vision. And the danger is that although price looks to be moving in a certain way by purely consulting this chart, if you zoom out and consult the higher time frames, you might find that price is actually displaying a different dynamic. OK, so where we have our clear bullish trend structure here and this suggests that our best method is to look for long opportunities. If we actually zoom out and look at this period of price action on the higher time frame, you can see that there is a totally different picture. OK, so this uh, this trend line here is the exact same trend line that we saw here. But the difference is this is a H4 chart and this is a daily chart. And so now you can see that. The clear bullish trend that was developing on the H4 time frame is actually only a very minor correction within a well established long term bearish trend. So instead of looking to buy within that short term counter trend where trades are likely to be limited to just a little profit, if you instead consult the higher time frame and you identify this big bearish trend, then it's clear that the much better opportunity would actually be to look to time entries to the downside, to so look to sell the market. OK, because there's a good chance that even though price is correcting here, because we have this long term, well established bearish trend and we know how the market moves in that dynamic of trend expansion and correction, that although the price is correcting higher here, at some point that bearish trend is likely to resume and price is likely to roll over and sell off. OK, so hopefully just this one example is getting you to really consider how important it is to consult the market on different time frames to make sure, first of all, that you avoid taking any unnecessary losses by going against the higher time frame trend. And that also you give yourself as strong a chance as possible of being on the right side of the market. Now, there's an important point to make here, which is that just because a lower time frame setup is running counter to the higher time frame trend doesn't mean that you can't take that trade. OK, so the chart that we looked at, first of all, and the area that you can see here, which displays a clear bullish trend structure. It's perfectly fine to look to take long trades in this short term environment, OK, provided that you adopt the way that uh, adapt rather the way that you trade. So, for example, you can look to move your stops break even a little bit quicker than you usually would to help you reduce your risk. You could also trade at a lower size than you usually would. And you could also play for shorter term targets. So just because a lower time frame trade is running counter to the higher time frame trend doesn't mean that you can't or shouldn't take the trade. It just means that you have to be razor sharp with how you manage the trade to make sure that you're managing your risk because you have to accept the likely outcome is that at some point the market will reverse and resume the higher time frame trend. And so this brings us on to the next key use of multi time frame analysis which is to identify key trade locations within the dominant trend, which we can look to use as entry points. So remember, identifying a trend is the first part of the puzzle, but finding an entry point is the most important part. So if we look back at the chart then on the daily time frame and start to think about key levels within the trend at the point that this bullish H4 structure was forming, then 
we can identify that a very key level is this level here, okay? So this is a very key resistance level. You can see that it started off as key support in the market. It held up this bearish trend. Price then broke down through that big level, traded down to this point here where we started to stall, and then we traded back up and retested that level, okay? So identifying these levels of key support and resistance on the higher time frames is a fantastic way to identify key entry points to the market. So in terms of using multi time frame analysis, then we know two things about this area on the chart. We know that if we're looking for a good area to sell where we're expecting the longer term trend to resume, then this is our first candidate. OK, so in bearish trends, we're always looking for price to retrace into broken lows, so to retrace into broken support which has now turned to resistance. And if it was a bullish trend, we'd be looking for price to trade back into broken highs. So prior resistance, which has now turned to support. So the first area, the first thing we know rather is that this area is a good place to look to sell. And then second of all, we know that if we are taking any long trades on the lower time frames, underneath this area that we need to be aware of the fact that this is likely to be a good place to take profit okay so we've identified this as being a good resistance level where we think that the bearish trend is likely to resume and so of course if we're long at any point below this level as price is trading up then we can look to take profits here expecting that the trend is likely to reverse uh, likely to resume at some point so hopefully now you're starting to get the hang of how we can use multi time frame analysis in a really simple and straightforward fashion to assess the markets, to identify trend direction and to also help us identify locations to enter trades, but also to help us identify areas where we need to be a little bit sharper with our trade management and of any short term counter trend trades that we might be taking. Now. Another fantastic way in which we can use multi time frame analysis is to analyze the markets and to identify trading opportunities using the study of candlesticks on the higher time frames. Now, hopefully you can remember from candlestick sessions that we did. And for those of you who are familiar with candlestick reading, you will know that there are certain candlesticks which signal a strong likelihood of a reversal or indeed continuation. So essentially what we can do is study the higher time frame charts, whether it be at the weekly close or the daily close, depending on what our lower time frame uh, trading horizon is. And then we can identify any key reversal or continuation candles, which we can then use to give us a trading bias over the session that we're using on the lower time frame. So let me walk you through an example, then I'll explain that in a little more detail. OK, so in this example, you can see that on the weekly chart, we have a really important situation highlighted here. OK, so price has traded down into a really key support level. You can see we have this big low in place. Price then bounced up. We then traded all the way back down into it. We actually traded just down below it. But then at this point here, you can see that price reversed sharply as buyers stepped in and overwhelmed sellers. And they drove price right back up and we closed all the way back above here. So this is what we would call a bullish engulfing candle. And this is a really strong reversal signal. OK, so the underlying order flow dynamic that creates this candle essentially shows us that sellers were losing momentum here because one, we have quite a small bearish candle compared to these other bearish candles. And then also, if you look what happened on the open of this next candle, price ran down just a little bit below this first bearish candle, showing us that sellers were still in control at this point. But then price quickly reversed. Buyers stepped in in a really strong, aggressive fashion, drove price all the way up to this high point here where we closed. So the body of this candle completely consumes the candle, uh, the prior candle. OK, so this is a really strong reversal signal showing us that there has been a really acute shift in sentiment in the market. So when we identify a situation like this, a really strong reversal candle at a key support level, then obviously our bias for the next week, because remember, this is a weekly candle. 
Our bias for the next week should be to look for long opportunities, okay? We've identified a key support level where we anticipate that price could reverse from, and then we've now identified the presence of a really strong bullish reversal candle. So the confluence of these two factors, the bullish reversal candlestick at a key support level, suggest to us that the market is likely to move higher and we should be on the lookout for long opportunities. So in terms of how we use multi time frame analysis here, as we said earlier in the session, where we've identified our bias on the higher time frames, what we then need to do is drop down to the lower time frames to identify our exact trading zones. OK, so we use the higher time frames such as the weekly or the daily to identify our directional bias. And then we look to use the lower time frames to identify our exact trading entries. So if we look down to the H4 charts now and the period of price action that we're going to be looking at is starting from this next weekly candle that opened after this bullish engulfing candle and then going up to this period here. OK. So I've highlighted a couple of areas on the charts here and essentially what you can see is some fantastic opportunities for getting long on the H4 time frame in line with our bias on the higher time frame. OK, so even just analyzing this chart with basic raw price action alone, you can see that we have some great opportunities. So this was our initial opening area where price broke out above this resistance zone. OK, so you can see the price had traded up, formed these highs at that last weekly candle. We then broke out above those highs on the new candle, traded back down, retested them. And then you can see we got this bullish pin bar here, which is a fantastic um, reversal signal. OK, so there are two opportunities here. Either one, we can just look to play a basic breakout above these highs because we anticipate the price is going to move higher based on that higher time frame view, which was established on the basis of there being that bullish engulfing candle. Or we can look to play this retracement back into those broken highs where, again, we get this bullish pin bar. Now, you can see there are also several opportunities for just playing classic breakouts. OK, so a breakout is simply where you look to buy as price breaks above highs or you look to sell as price breaks below lows. Now, obviously, because the candle was a bullish engulfing candle on the weekly time frame, we'd only be interested in trading to the top side. So we'd only be interested in trading bullish breakouts. And you can see we get several opportunities to do that along the way. Now, what's interesting at this point here is that we also get a repeat of the setup, which we saw right back at the start of that bullish candle opening. So you can see that price trades all the way up to this high point here, hits this little resistance level where it stalls. It then breaks out above that resistance level, again, giving you the opportunity to trade a classic bullish breakout. But then what we also see is price retrace back down and retest that broken resistance, which is now turned support. And then once again, we get those bullish candlesticks. So this is a really classic setup that I like to use in my trading a lot and that works well for a lot of traders. It's simply where you look to identify a breakout above resistance, a retest of that resistance zone with these bullish candlesticks and then play to the long side. And again, obviously, if we were in a bearish situation, we'd be looking for price to break below support, retest support and form bearish candlesticks. So this is a really fantastic setup which you can use and which works really well with higher time with multi time frame trading rather. So you identify your bias on the higher time frame. You then look to find exact trading opportunities on the lower time frames. OK, so this is a fantastic way then that you can use raw candlesticks to identify the directional bias on the higher time frames and then find these specific trading opportunities on the lower time frames. But we can also then use multi time frame analysis to alter our bias. OK, so where we've identified our initial bias. So in this instance, we've got a long bias in place due to that large bullish engulfing candlestick on the weekly chart, we can then monitor the higher time frame to help us know when to change our bias. So remember, 
We're looking to execute trades on the H4 time frame, but we're using the higher time frame to establish our directional bias. So that means that once we start entering trades on the lower time frames, we need to be monitoring those higher time frame charts to know when to change our bias and when to exit any trades that we're in or look to change the direction that we're trading in. So if we go ahead and go back to that higher time frame chart then, the weekly chart. So remember, this was our big bullish candlestick, which gave us our long bias in the first place. And then after price broke out above that candle, you can see that we should have kept our long bias intact all the way back up to this point here, where we get the presence of a big bearish pin bar at this prior high. So we've got a big bearish reversal candlestick at a double top zone. So this, again, is a good situation, uh, a good example, rather, of where we would look to shift our higher time frame bias. So our bias is initially to the top side based on the presence of this candlestick at a key support level. And then once price trades all the way up to this key resistance level and we get the presence of a bearish reversal candle, well, then that's when we know it's time to change our bias. So for the presence of that candle, if we were in any long trades, we'd either move our stops to break even or exit the trades for a profit. And then we'd be looking to take short trades on the lower time frames over the next few weeks. So this is a really fantastic way of using multi time frame analysis, simply reading candlesticks across the different time frames to identify a bias and then look for trading opportunities. Now, as we've already discussed, one of the key uses of multi time frame analysis is to help us find the dominant trend and technical indicators can be extremely useful in helping us do this. And an indicator such as the relative strength index, which measures the strength of price, can be particularly useful here. So if we pull up this example then of H4 charts, and we can see a couple of things I'll walk you through. So the first is you can see that we have this big resistance level in place. OK, so price is traded up to this double top. We've sold off. We've got a really strong resistance level in place. And then at this point here, you can see where price is trading in this range. And then we break out of it. We start to put in that classic bullish trend structure again. So we trade up and make a high. We retrace and make a higher low. We then break out above and put in a new high. We then trade back down and again put in another higher low. And then once again, we trade up, break out above that high and put in a fresh high. So once again, if we were looking at this chart just on this one time frame, I'm sure that we'd be looking to trade to the top side because we've got the presence of this bullish trend structure and we anticipate that price is likely to continue to move to the top side. However, if we zoom out on this chart and look at it but this time with the RSI indicator turned on, then we can notice an interesting dynamic. So looking at that period of price action on the higher time frame. So we've zoomed out from the H4 chart and we're now looking at the price action on a daily chart with the RSI indicator turned on. And you can see something really important. As price has broken out above that high level, you can see that the RSI indicator has moved into extreme overbought territory. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the relative strength index indicator, essentially what this indicator is doing is measuring momentum in the market. So it's measuring the strength of underlying price moves. And what you can see here are two thresholds on the chart. So the lower threshold, the 30 level, this indicates when momentum is oversold. So when price moves down and moves into this, when the indicator rather moves into this lower threshold, this indicates that momentum is oversold to the downside and price is likely to reverse higher. And then when the indicator line moves up to the upper threshold, the 70 level, this indicates that momentum is overbought to the top side. So it's overstretched to the top side and price is likely to reverse lower. So this is a really useful indicator for helping us 
identify potential periods of reversal in the market. And so essentially what we're seeing here when price breaks out above these highs is telling us that the breakout is likely to be short lived because the indicator has actually moved into extreme overbought territory. And you can see that shortly after breaking out, what happens is price simply rolls over. So essentially what we're seeing here on the higher time frame suggests to us that instead of looking to play a breakout above that high level, because the H4 charts were showing that bullish trend structure, we should instead be on the lookout for the potential of a reversal lower. So using the RSI indicator in this way can be a fantastic way to help us filter out trades. OK, so we've talked about the main problem with just using one time frame is that you don't get a full picture of what is going on across the different time frames in the market. So where price looks to be breaking out on the lower time frames, we want to look to the higher time frames to confirm that view. And using an indicator like the RSI can be a fantastic filter. And so here what we've actually seen is the RSI indicator suggesting to us that this breakout is likely to be short lived and the momentum is overstretched to the top side and a reversal lower is likely. And you can see that's actually what happens. So in terms of how we then look to play this type of situation in the market, we really have two potential setups. The one is to trade to the short side as price breaks back down within that level, uh, under that level rather. The second is to look to play to the top side as price breaks back above this breakout zone. Because if we think about what's going on here, we've identified a key resistance level in the market. And we anticipate that price is likely starting a fresh bullish trend structure, as we saw to the first point here. However, because the indicator has registered extreme overbought conditions as price has broken out to the top side, we anticipate the reversal lower is likely. And so either this was a completely false breakout and price simply starts to move to the downside again, or price is simply retracing before putting in another leg to the top side. So essentially, we wouldn't want to look to get long unless price breaks back above that high level. Because, for example, if you look at what was going on at this resistance level here, so where we had these two highs, you can see that the RSI indicator wasn't registering extreme overbought conditions. OK, so where price broke out above those highs, you can see the indicator was chopping around in the middle of its range. And it wasn't until we moved up to this point here, just below extreme overbought conditions that price actually reverse lower. So when we get breakouts like this, we really want to see RSI somewhere in the middle of its range to show us that there is still scope for more momentum to come into the market and for price to continue to push in that direction. Because where the indicator is registering extreme conditions like this, we know that it's unlikely that momentum is going to continue and a reversal is going to be likely to happen before there is any continuation in that direction or simply that the breakout has failed and it's going to reverse lower. So again, I hope that this really highlights the importance of analyzing the markets across different time frames. OK, so that's been another really dense session there. We've covered a lot and I hope that you found that interesting and useful. And as I say, the importance of using multi time frame analysis is that it helps us to identify the dominant trend on the higher time frames that we can then look to engage on the lower time frames using those time frames, the shorter term time frames to highlight specific training opportunities. OK, so again, to reiterate, we look to use the higher time frames to identify our directional bias, whether we're just looking at raw price action using the candlesticks or whether we're using the indicators. And then we move down to those lower time frames to actually identify exact trading opportunities. So just before we wrap up, then, are there any questions that I can answer for anyone? If you just want to write in the chat function, if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to answer those before we end today's session. OK, great. Well, I'm pleased that you all follow along with that and that you found the content useful. 
and I look forward to catching up with you all next time. So take care and best of luck in your trading. And remember to keep assessing the market across those different time frames to highlight the best opportunities and to stay on the right side of momentum in the market. Thanks a lot, everyone.